Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna learn how to code a to-do list in React. Now React is one of my favorite languages and one of the most popular languages. And what better way to practice your skills than to make a to-do list app. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. And we're gonna first start by opening up Stack Blitz. Um, you can use this or whatever uh, React dev environment you have. You know, you could code it locally on your computer or you can just use it um, online like I do here and it's really easy to boot up a new environment. So we're gonna go ahead and click React. So let's begin by creating the variable that's actually going to hold our to-do list item. So we're gonna call it to-dos and then we're gonna uh, call our function that sets this set to-dos. And then that's going to be equal to you state and we're going to initialize it as an empty array. And you notice one thing, it's complaining that it doesn't know what use state is. We're gonna go ahead and import that. So let's just delete this line up here. We're gonna say import react with a capital R and then comma and add these brackets here. And we're gonna put use state in the middle of these brackets. And then we're gonna say from, and then just react in single quotes. <laughs> And even though it has a squiggly line complaining about some error, you'll notice the app is still working properly and I'm not really sure what's going on there, but that is the right syntax and let's just move on. So not only do we want to set our to-do, but we're also gonna have a variable that holds our title for each um, to-do list item. Each item's going to have a description and a title and then the to-do's array here is going to hold all of that. So we're gonna call this set title, that's equal to you state, we're just going to initialize it as just a blank string. Um, this one's going to be description, set description is equal to use state once again, empty string here. Then we're gonna have two more variables. We're gonna have one, actually, you know, at this point, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it two more times. So this one's gonna be called is editing, and this will keep track of whether or not we're currently editing a to-do list item that already exists or not. And then we're going to have the edit index, and this will be in charge of keeping track of which index we need to use when we're um, editing things. All right, guys, now that we have that out of the way, let's just begin by setting up our UI. So for the actual title of the page, we're going to say um, to-do list app without the exclamation mark. And then we're going to erase this paragraph tag right here. And we're first going to have a text box. So let's go ahead and make a label for this text box. And this label is just going to say title with a colon. And then right below that title, we're going to have an input. Do this, we're gonna say type is text. The uh, ID is title and the name is title as well. And we're also going to have a value and a on change handler here. That way, anytime they type in there, um, we can set the value. So up here, we're going to set up our handler and instead of having a separate thing, we're actually going to just put it in line here. So we're going to have an empty set of parentheses, this arrow key. And then every time this is changed, we're just going to set the title equal to the event.target.value. So whatever they're typing will be set to the title. And then the actual value itself will be whatever's in this title variable here. So we're just going to put that there. And the one thing we're missing is this event. It doesn't know what it is. So if we pass this in right over here, then now everything works right. And we can type in here. And even though we're not displaying it currently, title is actually being set every time we change a letter. All right, guys, right after that, let's create a break line. It's the wrong line here. So we're gonna have a break line. And then let's just copy this exact same thing again, because we do need one more uh, text box, but this one's going to be called description. Um, obviously change the name and the title to or sorry, the name and the ID to description. Set a title, we're going to set it to this uh, description state variable. And instead of set title, we're gonna have set description. And it looks like we need one more break line here. So put another one, that way these just have nice spacing. And actually, you know what? Instead of having it look ugly like this, why don't we just put the labels on separate lines from the actual text box? So we'll put the break lines right below the labels, click save, and you'll notice the only thing missing is we do need an extra set over here. So if we put this right like that, now you'll notice they line up perfectly and it looks a lot better. All right, guys, we're also going to need a button that's in charge of saving stuff. So create a button inside of the tags here. We're going to just say save our um, on click is going to be set to add to do, which is a function we still have to write. And for now, just so that we can see the app is still working, why don't we just make this function right now? So 
add a few lines of space up here. And what we're gonna do is just create an asynchronous uh, method called add to do. That's going to be equal to these empty parentheses here and then this little error looking thing and then that. And now we should have this error be gone and you'll notice it's now gone and our app is back up and working. Um, if you want, you can leave the save button on uh, right here on the same line, or you could do kind of what we did earlier, just make another break line here. That way it has some spacing. And yeah, everything seems to be working up to this point. All right, guys, now we also need a table that will display our past to do, you know, items that we've added, right? So right below this, this button, we're going to create a table. First, just make sure you have those tags set. Um, as with any table, we're going to have a T head and a T body as well. And in our T head, we're gonna have a couple of headers. And the first one, let me just make one of these empty sets here. We're gonna have three total headers. The first one's going to be title. Second one is going to be description. And then the third one is actually going to be an action column. That way we can kind of put a button in that column, uh, you know, an edit button or a delete button. And people can easily manage the past um, you know, to-do list items that they've added. And now for the T-body, um, all we need to do is uh, reference the array that's storing all of our to-do list items, right? So that's going to be called to-dos. So what we need to do is set, have a little squiggly brackets, so that way we can reference our JavaScript code. And what we're gonna do is say to-dos.map and open up these parentheses here and open them up one more time. So in here, we're gonna have a to-do. So each item that in the array, we're gonna just call it to-do. And then we're also going to have an index and put the little um, arrow sign here and then open up some brackets. Actually, sorry, my bad, not brackets. We need them to be parentheses. Go ahead and should look something like this. Because this is React, every single row should have a unique key set to it. So for when we create a row here, it's gonna be key is equal to our index. And then all we need to do is simply just output each um, item in the array. And because this array actually holds objects. Um, each object will have, you know, a title and a description. Um, that's actually something we need to keep in mind when we're outputting it here. So we're going to have three total sets of uh, table data like cells. The first one, we're just going to output the to do dot title. And the second one here, we're going to say to do dot description. In this third cell, this is where we actually will have the edit and delete buttons. So I would recommend giving yourself a little space here because it'll be a little bit more complex than these past two entries. So all we're going to do is go ahead and copy this button here. We're going to put it right here. And instead of it saying save, we're going to say edit. And this will be edit to do is on click here. And also make sure you have it set to an empty function. That way nothing breaks here. And we also need to pass in our index. That way we know which note to um, edit when we click on this. And go ahead and copy this one more time. And we're just going to set it up to be a delete button instead of edit. So this is going to say delete. We're going to say delete to do. And the only thing we're missing is these actual functions. So if we go up here, we already have the add to do. Why don't we just copy it? We're gonna call it edit to do. I wish the autocomplete was working, but anyways, we could just copy and paste over here. And now that we have all three functions, our app is still working, which is awesome. And yeah, now we can really start making this app actually work. So first let's begin by making our add to do method, because that's going to be the our, you know, we need that to be working first before we can work on our edit and our deleting stuff. So the first thing I'll do in here is just check if is editing is equal to true or not, because that will dictate whether or not, actually we don't even need is editing is equal to true, we could just say is editing. This will dictate whether we're saving it as a brand new entry in the array or we're referencing a certain index and saving the edited information. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit, but for now just, Set it up like this, and we're going to first work on the else, and this will be save as a new to-do item. So like I said, this is going to be an array full of objects, and with that, we actually need to make an object. So we're going to say var to-do list item is equal to this, and then we're going to just have two fields. We're going to have a title is equal to title and description is equal to description. So every time that we click the save button, it's going to call this add to do function. If we're not editing a note, we're gonna make a new note. We're gonna create a brand new item. 
And that item is going to have a title and description property, which is holding the values from these two things right here. So once we know that our um, object is all set up and ready to go, we can actually insert it into the array. So we're gonna say set to do's and open up some parentheses here. And the first thing we need to do is make sure we save everything that's already in the array. That way we don't overwrite it and just delete everything. So we're gonna say dot, 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 and then just to do's because we wanna make sure to save that. And then we're going to add in our new to do list item on top of that. And guys, it's as easy as that. All we need to do after this is just, um, you know, anytime you click the save button, if you have some crap in here, you probably want to clear it out. That way you can start a brand new note. A simple way to do that is we're just going to set our title back to nothing. We're going to set our description back to nothing. And because we are done, or we just clicked this button, whether we are editing or not, we need to set our editing thing to false because we are no longer doing that. So set editing is false. And actually, instead of a blank thing up here, I'm just going to say false. That way it's just a Boolean value. And that should be almost it for your add to do function here. So before we move on, let's just test it to make sure it works. And whenever we click the save button, there should be a brand new entry right below here. So if we just say test, you'll notice there's two new entries and then yeah, an edit and delete button that don't work yet, but that's awesome that it's set up. And then yeah, we can keep going like um, test to copy this, paste it, save. And you'll notice we can just keep adding stuff as much as we want. And that's great. So let's move on to our remove to do function before we do the edit one. I feel like it'll just be a little easier. So anytime we delete something, we first know that the index is being passed in based on right here. So actually let's make sure that we put index inside of these parentheses here. That way we can reference it in our function. All right guys, what we need to do is go ahead and first create a temporary variable. So we're gonna say const temp to do is equal to, and then in here we're gonna say just dot, dot, dot to do's. That way we import everything that to do's is set to. And then what we're gonna do is actually remove the index that we are trying to delete out of here. So we're gonna say temp to do dot splice. And what splice is gonna do is the first parameter is the index where we want to um, remove it from. So we know that we can reference index because that's passed into the function. And then the second parameter is the amount of items that you actually want to delete starting from that index. And since we only want to delete one thing, we put one as our second parameter here. And then the last thing to do is just go ahead and say set to do's equal to our temp to do. That way it overwrites what's currently in there and we have a brand new, or we have the existing array just with the thing removed that we didn't want. So let's go ahead and test it out. If we say test, test, let's make a test two as well and save that. So if you wanna go ahead and delete this first one, let's click delete. And we notice that it perfectly removes the first one and then we just have the second one left over. All right guys, finally, let's move on to our edit function. So go and find that and give yourself some space here. The first thing we need to do is pull out of the array the item we're actually trying to edit, right? So first we're gonna say var to do to edit. Actually, let me make this camel case. Yeah, so our to do to edit is equal to the to do's array. So our var of to do to edit is equal to our to do's array and then the index that we actually want to edit. And now what we need to do is whenever we click edit, we need to import that data from the table into the text box so that we can actually make changes. And obviously the title and description text box, as you saw earlier, are equal to this title and this description variable that we have up here. So if we just call these functions and set them, then we can go ahead and import them into the uh, text field. So we're gonna just say set title and then open up your parentheses here. That's going to be our to-do list, uh, to edit item at the index that we, um, actually you don't, you don't even need to say that. You could just say dot title. And then set description is going to be the same thing. So to-do to edit dot description. And that will go ahead and move it into the um, text fields for us. And then the last thing we need to do is because once we save it, we're actually using another function. We need to update these two variables that way this function up here works properly. So first we need to set our is editing variable to true because we are editing a note and then set our edit index equal to the index that was passed in. That way we could reference it later. 
So once that's set, your edit function is done. And now let's go up to our add to do function and edit the edit um, area. That way we can um, complete our code. And this part is actually super easy. All we need to do is once they click save, we know this function is going to be fired. And at that point, they are done editing the note. And all we need to do is just save it into the array. So it's very similar to this. But luckily for us, we don't need to create this temporary object because it already exists at the index in that array. So all we need to do is reference our array, reference the index it's at, which is the edit index, and then say dot title is equal to, and then just reference our title as it stands. So title, and then the same thing down here. So to do's at the edit index dot description is equal to the description that we have over here. And once we have that, Honestly, we should be done. So let's go ahead and test it. So let's make a couple test notes. We'll just uh, number them. So we'll do test two. We'll do test three as well. So oh, I accidentally did a four down here. Oops. Um, let's begin by editing number two just to make sure that part works. So if we click edit, it properly imported it into here. And if we just add, I don't know, a three onto here and click save, you'll notice the indexes didn't change. Now we have a new title and description. It's been edited properly, so that's awesome. Now let's go ahead and test deleting it. So let's click delete. And we notice it is successfully gone, so that's awesome. And then yeah, we know that adding new notes works as well because we can just you know click save as much as we want and that works as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have built a successful um, to-do list app and it is awesome. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.